You may know Doris Day as one of the greatest stars in Hollywood history, but did you know two events, one at the start and one at the end of her career, nearly robbed her of everything she had? From how she survived a freight train collision at 15 years old, to how her husband threw away her entire fortune right before he died and left her with nothing. In this video, we will take a deep dive into the shocking life of Doris Day while showing you some of her rare photos. On April 3, 1922, Doris Mary Kappelhoff was born to German-American parents Alma Sophia Wells and William Joseph Kappelhoff in Cincinnati, Ohio. She was named after the Hollywood star Doris Margaret Kenyon. Right from birth, it seems she was fated to become a huge Hollywood star as well. But at the time, little Doris actually had her eye on dance and music. Her father was a music teacher and choir master. Because of this, Doris learned the fundamentals of music at an early age. Unfortunately, he went and had an extramarital affair. As a result, her parents separated when she was just 10 years old. Despite entering her teen years in a broken home, Doris continued to work hard at dancing, so much so that she formed a dance duo with her friend, Jerry Doherty. The two of them were so good that they often performed in nationwide competitions, right up until Doris wound up in that frightening and awful car accident. Even though the outcome could have been way worse, Doris managed to crawl away from the accident with only a broken leg. She still had her life, but her career as a dancer was essentially over. For many people, this would have been the end of their showbiz aspirations. But for Doris, this was the start of a new, exciting chapter. While waiting for her leg to recover fully, the bedridden Doris sang along with the radio. This led her to discover her talent for singing. The fundamentals of music, which her father had taught her, came into play here. As such, even though Doris could not be a dancer anymore, she for sure had the talent to be a professional singer. Doris listened to a wide variety of artists on the radio, including Duke Ellington, Benny Goodman, Glenn Miller, and Tommy Dorsey. However, the artist that stood out to her the most was Ella Fitzgerald. Doris was so fascinated by Ella's voice that she tried to copy the casual and clean way that she sang. When Doris's mother overheard her doing this, she realized the girl's talent and sought a professional singing teacher for her. That teacher's name was Grace Rene. Initially skeptical of Doris's talent, she was surprised when she heard her sing for the first time. In fact, she told Doris's mother straight up that her girl had tremendous potential. From that day onward, she gave Doris three singing lessons a week for the price of one. Much later in life, Doris proclaimed that Grace Reyna was a greater influence on her singing career than anyone else. Doris excelled so much at singing that even before her eight-month recovery period was over, she landed a job as a vocalist on a radio program known as Carlin's Carnival. She also started singing at a local restaurant known as Charlie Yee's Shanghai Inn. Her performances on radio were so good that she caught the attention of Barney Rapp, an American jazz musician and orchestra leader. Barney just happened to be looking for a vocalist for his band, and Doris fit the bill 100%. Even though Barney had auditioned about 200 other singers, none of them could compare to Doris. While touring with Barney, the jazz musician made a wonderful suggestion to her. He told her that Kappelhoff was a bit too long for marquee signs and advised her to change it to Day. At the time, Doris performed a wonderful rendition of the song Day After Day. Hence, in 1939, when Doris was 17 years old, the persona of Doris Day was born. This catchy name would play no small part in her success. Doris went on to work with other band leaders, such as Jimmy James, Bob Crosby, and Les Brown. In 1941, when she was just 19 years old, she had two number one recordings, Sentimental Journey and My Dreams Are Getting Better All The Time. In fact, Sentimental Journey became the anthem for World War II servicemen. Even before the age of 20, Doris Day was becoming a household name. While working with Les Brown, Doris went on an extensive tour across the U.S. During one of those tours, her wonderful performance of the song Embraceable You caught the ear of songwriter Jewel Stein and his partner Sammy Kahn. They simply had to have her for their upcoming musical movie, Romance on the High Seas. It was to be directed by Hollywood legend Michael Curtis, who also directed Casablanca. Day auditioned for Curtis, after which he cast her for the role. However, she was shocked to get the part as she hadn't acted before. An anxious Doris relayed this fact to Curtis, who appreciated her so much for her honesty. While other aspiring actors usually lied to get roles, Doris was telling the truth to get out of one. Michael calmed her down and assured her that she would do great. Also, her blonde hair and freckled face gave her the image of a true American sweetheart. 
True to Curtis's words, Romance on the High Seas launched Doris Day's Hollywood career. And what a career it was. While working in Hollywood, she continued to sing as a solo artist. Having two careers in tandem increased the success of both of them. In fact, her work on Romance on the High Seas gave her her first number two hit as a soloist. This came just two months after her first number one hit. Doris had a long and storied Hollywood career. However, her biggest box office hits came between the tail end of the 50s to late in the 60s. In 1959, the movie Pillow Talk came out, co-starring Rock Hudson and Tony Randall. It was an immense success, and it is still celebrated today. Hollywood producers were so impressed by the chemistry between Rock Hudson and Doris Day that the two were paired together again in Lover Come Back. They also co-starred again in Send Me No Flowers. Other highlights of Day's Hollywood career include the movie, The Man Who Knew Too Much. This was a remake by the notorious director Alfred Hitchcock. In the movie, Doris was paired with none other than Jimmy Stewart. Of the two versions available, this version of the movie is considered superior. In her illustrious seven-decade career, Day's favorite movie she starred in is Calamity Jane. Doris related to the character because she, too, was a tomboy growing up. A song from the film Secret Love won the Academy Award for Best Original Song. This also marked Doris's fourth number one hit single in the United States. While Doris was always smart with her career choices, she wasn't always smart with her personal choices, particularly her choice of husbands. Out of her four marriages, the first and the third threatened to ruin her. The first was to trombonist Al Jordan, whom she met while working with Barney Rapp's band and the third was to film producer Martin Melcher. Jordan was a violent schizophrenic, but Doris didn't know at the time. When she became pregnant, he tried to force a miscarriage by beating her severely. The baby was born, and he grew to hate his father so much that he adopted the name of Doris's third husband. In 1967, when their son was 25 years old, Jordan committed suicide. Doris's third husband, Martin Melcher, was with her for 17 years. As he produced many of her films, their relationship involved not just romance, but business as well. Doris trusted him to take her of her assets. However, she trusted him a bit too much. When he died in 1968, she was shocked to discover that he and his business partner, Jerome Bernard Rosenthal, had severely misused her earnings. Now, she was way in the red. The death of Melcher also revealed that Doris had unknowingly been signed to some TV contracts. As TV was considered inferior to the movies at the time, Doris found this embarrassing. Even so, she honored her contract, but not before she sued Rosenthal and gained a multi-million dollar judgment. Rosenthal tried to counter sue. However, this was to no avail. In the years since these scandals, Doris has still maintained that her third husband, Martin Melcher, was innocent of any wrongdoing. In her words, he merely trusted the wrong person. Melcher was the one who converted Doris to Christian science. Due to her belief in this alternative faith, she stayed away from hospitals even when she suffered strange cancer-like symptoms. Later on, she had a hysterectomy to remove a grapefruit-sized tumor growing in her intestines. Following the death of Melcher, she left the church. Yet still, she continued to study their beliefs. In her later years, Doris focused more on animal activism than on showbiz. Her fourth husband, Barry Comden, was the head waiter at one of her favorite restaurants. His love of dogs had a great deal to do with why Doris fell for him. He always used to give her meat scraps for her dogs whenever she was leaving the restaurant. Funnily enough, they split up in 1982 because he felt that Doris cared more for her animal friends than she did for him. Doris always maintained that she was born in 1924. However, in 2017, the Associated Press found her birth certificate stating that she was born in 1922. Perhaps this was a lie she adopted at the start of her career since she was so young. Perhaps this was just an honest mistake. In any case, when she died of pneumonia on May 13, 2019, she was actually 97 years old. Per her request, there was no funeral service, grave marker, or public memorial of any kind. Doris Day's personal life had its fair share of tragedies. However, her professional life was almost impeccable. Even though she was denied a career as a dancer, she went on to make marvelous things happen as a singer and as an actress. Doris rejected huge roles during her acting career, such as the part of Maria in the hit musical, The Sound of Music. Even so, she always found a way to make things work for her. Nobody can deny that Doris Day is an absolute legend. It's such a blessing that she left such an incredible body of work to be shared and enjoyed. She will always be remembered for her beautiful smile, powerful voice, and wonderful acting skills. The world is a better place for having had a Doris Day in it.
If you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll also enjoy the one showing on your screen right now. Click, enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you on the next one.